Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the library at Calvary Road Baptist Church. Uh, we're located in uh, the city of Monrovia, California. Uh, of course, Monrovia, California is located in the Gulag of Los Angeles County. We're in the south end of the People's Republic of California that's presided over by General Secretary Gavin Newsom, at least until the recall. Um, I have the privilege of, of hosting this evening on our Saturday night Zoom session, a missionary to India, Brother David Malaputi. Um, we have for a long time in our church uh, felt that it was wise in this age in which we now live for us to uh, support guys that number one, don't have to learn the language, number two, don't have to learn the culture, uh, and, and uh, guys that have maturity and experience under their belt. And Brother David Malaputi and his wife B uh, are a wonderful couple that our congregation fell in love with. Uh, very hospitable people. They invited us uh, to their home in Anaheim, uh, and we were treated to a, an absolute feast of a meal. Uh, with them and uh, members of their extended family. But our church has supported them for a number of years, and uh, they are church planters in India on the east coast of India. And so without any further ado, let me bring uh, on board to this, this uh, Zoom session, Brother David Malaputi. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. I can sure hear you. It sure is nice to hear the sound of your voice. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. So how are you and your wife uh, holding up under this? Uh, I think COVID has hit India real hard, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. In the beginning of from March, uh, we had a hard time here about three, four months and a lot of people died. No matter how much money you spend it, uh, they died. And some people healed uh, without spending any money. But uh, we thank God, you know, uh, we don't have any problems around us, you know, in our village where I'm staying. And God is protecting us daily. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm so glad to hear that. I'm so glad to hear that. So for the, uh, the members of our church who have mm -hmm. come to Christ and become members uh, since the last time we saw you, would you give us just a few minutes of personal biography for you and your wife uh, from the time you were born, maybe a little bit of family history up to the present and how you became a missionary in India? Hmm. Well, I was born in India in 1947, and uh, my father was a preacher and also a school teacher at that time. And uh, uh, God opened the door for me to come to California in 1970. At that time, I was only uh, around uh, 23, not married. And uh, I came here uh, to California, went to Chapman University, got a degree from there, and uh, I got uh, baptized in 19, uh, 1962 in India. And... Um, and uh, from there, uh, I started helping my dad, you know, going to village, village, you know, preaching the gospel. But I helped him uh, so much until uh, 70, until I left India. Then uh, started coming, uh, I mean, uh, I came to California, 70, and I started uh, helping my dad, you know, uh, financially uh, to do the gospel up there, you know, uh, different levels and... Uh, and I here went home with the Lord, uh, to be with the Lord in 1990. From there, uh, we don't know what to do, you know, because uh, when we send the money, he was very careful spending that money for the ministry only. And uh, it took a little while to find anybody, but uh, uh, we did not give any financial responsibility to anybody, you know. We carried out ourselves. And uh, we used to come uh, on our vacation days, you know, uh, spend here and uh, be with uh, church families. And uh, that's the way we did it. And uh, in, uh, in uh, 2007, we resigned the work and uh, 
decided to become a full time missionary you know and uh, one day i woke up with that two thoughts in my mind who i am what i'm doing i am a indian you know yeah and uh, i also holding a citizenship in america you know but uh, i have the access to go to india preach the gospel no other missionaries allowed even to go yes. preach in our meetings you know at all they don't give a visa uh, yes. when they hear uh, they are uh, uh, preachers in uh, america and uh, why i'm doing here you know why don't i go there and uh, uh, help them you know with the local pastors you know that's what i did and uh, we built two over 12 churches in india while i am working in america yes and uh, we are still conducting a meetings and a street meetings and all those things you know now let me let me pause you right there because yes, sometimes uh, that slips by a guy but you and uh-huh. your wife uh-huh. helped to establish 12 churches yeah while you were working in southern california Yeah and you would go back to India on vacation and help establish churches. So you That's started right. 12 churches before you became a missionary. That's right. That's, That's right. Cr- That's tremendous. Yeah. Yeah. And That's then one uh, of the things uh, about we, you that impresses me, brother. <laughs> uh, yeah, my father uh, he's a good man and he is very dedicated to, you know, uh, Christ. first of all you want to become a police uh, officer then uh, one of the missionaries from uh, britain he uh, he talked to him and persuaded him to go to the mission uh, teacher training school nearby you know he went to the training and after finishing high school uh, in those days high school is very higher education you know yes yes because nobody goes to school here at that time you know Yes but uh, he became a headmaster of the school and uh, whenever he had time he goes out to neighboring villages to preach the gospel that's why it's wonderful did. so yeah. you're you are a third generation in the ministry that's right that's good that's good yeah. hey uh, how has uh, how has the covid affected your area of ministry i know that you're safe and you're healthy uh but how has it affected number one, uh that area around you that's mm-hmm. number one. and number two, how has it affected the ability of supporting churches to continue their support of you what happened during the high uh, problematic uh, months you know mar march april may june july you know and uh, uh government control uh, they closed all the churches no meetings at all yeah and uh, we have uh, our house next to our house uh, there is a one uh, little church we built you know the government doesn't know about that church yes and uh, <laughs> we we conducted uh, regular services in that church people came you know whoever want to come and we conducted services some of our churches they conducted services 5 o'clock in the morning before the police uh, wake up You yes <laughs> and they finished the <laughs> services uh, they left home you know around uh, say, seven o'clock went home and uh, well, i know i day. know what i know a church planter in nepal he says uh-huh. he goes up into the mountains to preach he says because police officers don't want to get out of their car oh i see i see <laughs> <laughs> there's always a way brother that's first century christianity That's yeah, the way they exactly. did it in the first century. Exactly, exactly. A lot of uh, people went through prosecution in the first century, you know. Yes. But uh, there are a lot of people suffering in India, you know, isolated areas, you know, uh, beating uh, Christians, you know, because of their belief in uh, Jesus Christ. And uh, when I see that videos, uh, uh, I felt very bad, you know. very bad yeah yeah well that's great man i tell you what i'm so excited now to refresh my memory you are located uh, how far south of that is it a shrine or to thomas the apostle yeah that's about a uh, 12 hours uh, train uh, ride uh, toward the south to the south of you yeah south of okay 
But, so uh, the apostle, the apostle went to India and he ministered there and he was martyred there, huh? That's right. That's right. Uh, Catholics, they build a shrine upon the mountain, you know. When you go to that mountain, you can see the city very well and uh, aeroplanes taking off and uh, landing and everything. You can see it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The well, road uh, in, uh, in that city leads, uh, they call them um, uh, Mount Road. Mount Road. I see. That will see, um, uh, take you to the St. Thomas uh, burial ground. So if someone were to leave Los Angeles Airport, LAX, hmm. how would they get to you? They can come to Chennai, where that city, where that shrine is located. And from there, uh, yeah, they can take another flight to nearby to us, you know, about uh, 15 miles away, small airport. So or one long understand. flight and then one short flight would get you just That's about right. there. One hour, two hours flight. I see. Yeah. I see. Well, that's very, very interesting. Um, so what are the present needs uh, of the ministry there that we can pray about and look into helping with? Yeah, uh, we, uh, we asked for the Bible so last uh, about two, three months ago. And we received a lot of response through Bob Hines. You know, IMAP uh, uh, preacher. Yes, yes. And uh, he helped us uh, to raise a couple of thousand dollars, you know. And uh, we are able to secure about uh, 500 Bibles, you know. And that's very good help. Uh, but our car, uh, we bought the car uh, in 2007 when we came here. It's about uh, next year, it's going to be 15 years uh, over, you know. Yeah, and after fifteen years, uh, you had to re-register the car or uh, condemn the car. You know, so it's getting old, and uh, air condition went out, and we drove about a year without AC. I spent about twenty thousand rupees, you know, to fix the air conditioning. It didn't work. There is no oh. guarantee. You know. Yeah. I felt very bad, and uh, okay, uh, that's fine. I will uh, uh, go without air conditioning. You know, so. I'm uh, praying and uh, uh, we have a little money, then uh, if we can raise some money for that car, that will be helpful. Okay, okay. So if uh, so, any money toward a car, we would just uh, send it to where we normally send it? And That's just, right. And uh, just indicate that it's to help out with the car? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good. Um, so how about, because um, you and I, we're not young guys anymore. Hmm. Um, what about uh, the next generation? Is, is, does God seem to be blessing your ministry with uh, younger men coming along uh, oh. to do some preaching and teaching? Yeah, India is getting worse, you know, day by day, you know. We have uh, our uh, state governor, he's a believer in Christ. I'm sorry, say that again? Our governor of our state, Andhra Pradesh. Wow, wow. He was a Christian, he was a Christian. Wow. And, uh, but uh, he's a Hindu, but converted. Wow. Very religious fellow. And uh, uh, some of the temples, uh, uh, they destroyed themselves, you know, the Hindu temples, and uh, blaming uh, on a uh, chief minister. Wow. Yeah, but... Does, uh, uh, does, does Prime Minister Modi give him problems? Because yeah, I understand that yeah, Prime Minister yeah, Modi is a yeah. very fierce Hindu nationalist. Very, very uh, Hindu and uh, he, he is uh, belong to the RSS group. You know, and uh, RSS group, uh, they give a hard time for the Christians. Yes, yes. Preachers and all those people, you know. Yeah. But uh, this base is in uh, California, in uh, Simi Valley. Uh, they it monitor. Is. They monitor all the preachers. They are coming to India for preaching. Wow. 
and uh, they also give information to the consulate general not to issue visas. Oh wow! Yeah, if wow. you tell them your your profession is a Christian preacher or a pastor of a certain church, they don't give you a visa. You have to yeah. tell uh, your uh, you know business fellow or something else. So if I were to visit India, uh, it would have to be as the CEO of the nonprofit that I started. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you you I, put it the right way, you know. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's uh, that's tremendous. That's tremendous. And um, uh, so, what about the 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 conflict that is developing between India and China? Um, how is the nation um, uh, resonating? Is it kind of solidifying their patriotism and their willingness to oppose the Chinese communists? Yeah, people always, uh, they unite with the uh, Indian government. They oppose uh, uh, Chinese invasion. Yeah. And uh, uh, they're watching and uh, carefully, and uh, Biden also issued uh, some kind of warning to Chinese, you know. And, well, uh, I, I, watch a, I, watch a ch I watch a YouTube channel that originates uh -huh. in India, uh, uh -huh. W-I-O-N, and... Uh, and uh, they, they, they have persuaded me that I guess because of the ongoing conflicts with Pakistan, India's soldiers are very battle-hardened and experienced men. And mm. the Chinese have not had a conflict in 40 years. So they're mm. pretty soft. Yeah. And um, so it's, it's gonna, it's, uh, the, the Chinese better be careful because the, the Indian army will be able to handle them. Yeah, that's right. And then another thing is, the Chinese, you know, they bring in anybody come along, you know, they just push them to the border. Yeah. They have so many people uh, up there, and you know, they don't know what to do. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they don't have any experience, like you said, you know, and uh, they got to be very careful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So is, is India, generally speaking, economically, do they tend to be more of a free market economy than they used to be? Exactly, exactly. When uh, Indira Gandhi was in power, they did not allow any foreign goods to uh, come to the country. But now everything comes from China. I see. Yeah. I, I see. Uh, like uh, we travel between countries, you know, if we take a tape recorder or something, they used to. I see. I see. We had to pay extra duty, you know, for yeah. paying things. Yeah. But uh, now, uh, from, uh, we are coming from America, they don't even bother to open our suitcases, you know. Well, I, I, am, I have just finished reading a book uh -huh. about a young. Uh, yogi uh -huh. who, who uh was living in trinidad in the caribbean yeah and he yeah. was a he was a high caste indian and uh how god worked in his life and in his family uh -huh. um so it's it's uh god is uh is working among indians in different parts of the world to bring them to christ exactly i think i read that book too you know it, was it called the death of a yogi or something like exactly, that? Exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, but it was a really good book, uh, inspiring good, uh, book. And uh, the Hinduism basically blind belief, you know. Yes. Whatever the uh, priests say, they believe it, and that's it, you know. Yes. Yeah. Well, I had a chance to meet uh, a man a couple of months ago who was an American born fellow hmm. who got involved in the charismatic movement in New York City uh -huh. and he became disillusioned uh, he was the money guy he handled the money he got disillusioned when he found out that all of the money was being used on uh, private jet planes and things like that the extravagant lifestyle hmm. so he turned his back on Christianity he had been raised in a Christian home he ended up in India and oh, became a, a Maharishi or something like that. Oh, he literally traveled around the world 
Uh -huh. And his primary vocation was mm -hmm. to convert nominal Christians to Hinduism. I see. And he did that for like 30 years. Mm -hmm. And then the Spirit of God began dealing with him about all the scripture that he had learned as a child. Uh -huh. and, and he came to Christ. And he's now in the Los Angeles, uh, in, the, in, in Los Angeles County. Uh, in a very humble situation because he believes that he was so lifted up with pride and the demonic activity that he was associated with through his involvement in Hinduism. Hmm. And uh, so it was, it was quite, quite an interesting thing to see how God worked and, and to hear from you, uh, hmm. like your governor being a Christian and the ministry that God has blessed you with seeing mm. people come to Christ. And then I find out that, uh, that this American uh, had turned his back on Christianity for 30 years. Mm. And then the spirit of God reached out to him and got a hold of his heart and saved him. Uh, mm. So it's nice to see that God is still able to change people's lives. Amen. Amen. So when, when will be the next time you think you might be able to, if travel restrictions are lifted, uh, come hmm. back to the USA. Maybe in the summer. Okay. Yeah. But uh, as soon as I come, I'll uh, give you a call and uh, we'll come and meet with you. I would love that. And either you invite me to your house and I eat your wife's great cooking, or uh -huh. we bring you guys up to Monrovia and I take you to the, uh, to the Indian restaurant and we eat curry together. I see. That's <laughs> yeah, maybe we can come to our house. We'll see, you know, at that time. Anyway, uh, yeah. just so much love you and love being with your wife. She's such a delightful woman. And, um, and, and, uh, and your son, a uh, wonderful guy. And he's doing well, I presume? Yeah, he's doing okay. They're uh, building a new building. They tear down a whole thing and they sold uh, some property. With that money, they're trying to build a new one. Okay, okay. They are uh, meeting in uh, some other place uh, in uh, Anaheim uh, temporarily. I see, I yeah. see. And so Pastor Dave is doing well? He's doing good, yeah, well. Good, I'm glad to hear that. So yeah. if, if, a, if, a, if, if a pastor uh, wanted to inquire about your ministry uh, uh -huh. in India, what would be the best way for him to reach out to you to make contact? Uh, he can always uh, give me an e uh, uh, email. You know, he can send information on an email. Uh, all he got to do is uh, dmallipudi at hotmail.com. And I will put that link underneath your picture uh, okay. when I send this out to pastors. Okay, good. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate you taking the time to let us do this. I know it's kind of unusual and kind of weird, but mm -hmm. uh, it's the only way we can do it. And uh, we love getting your letters. Uh, we love you up on our mission board and, uh, and our folks who know you, remember you fondly and look forward to seeing you again. Mm -hmm. And so uh, let's end this session with a word of prayer, shall we? Yeah, sure. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We appreciate so much Brother David Malaputi uh, and his wife, B. We're so thankful for their ministry. Uh, what an astonishing thing that you would use a man to start so many churches uh, while he's working a, a regular J-O-B. And then after he's retired from his career in business, then he becomes a missionary. Uh, that's uh, a wonderful opportunity. That's a wonderful thing to take advantage of. And the benefit that he has, an Indian man in India, preaching and ministering to Indians in a way uh, that no one born in the United States would ever be able to do because of the laws there. And so we pray that you might help us as uh, like, like Aaron and her to hold up his arms in prayer and in support. Uh, bless his ministry, help our church to stay behind him 100%. And we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you, my brother. Uh, please uh, you, give Pastor. our best wishes to your wife. You want to say hello? She is here.
Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Me. How are you? How are you? Thank you, sir. Fine. It's so good to see you. My goodness. Yeah. Are you doing okay? Yeah, we are doing fine. Thank you. I'm so glad to hear the sound of your voice. Uh, here I am. Uh, the cameras are running. And I'm trying to get around the corner and look at you. But oh. it doesn't, it doesn't, there we go. That's perfect. Thank you so much. And um, it's so good to see you again. I look forward to seeing you guys soon. And uh, I'm becoming very agitated and very frustrated by all of these uh, restrictions they're placing on us. Yes. Um, and and um, I, I, I like the fact that you guys are continuing your ministry, um, obeying God rather than men. I mean, we want to obey the law as much as we possibly can. But we have to serve God, and uh, and believers have to be able to gather. So, uh, praise God for you guys, and uh, blessings to you, blessings to your family. And so, I'm going to sign off at this time. Good night. Okay. Take care. You, Bye, David. Thank, thank you, Pastor, for your uh, prayers and uh, financial help, and continue pray for us. Thank you. I look forward to coming visiting you in India one of these days. Okay, sir. Thank you. God bless Bye. you. Bye-bye.